So the journey to repairing Game Gears is a lot more long-winded than any other retro console. Due to the capacitors failing and the random damage they can cause to the boards, you could get all kinds of issues that wouldn't typically happen any other way except random damage. I've started a site called Retro6.wiki where I post all follow-ups to these videos with more technical in-depth detail. And in this video, the next step after you've recapped a Game Gear is to get the red light to come on. So I'm calling this red light boot and it's the next stage in the Game Gear booting up. Until you get the red light boot, then there's no point continuing with the repair. You first remove the capacitors because they can cause dead shorts, which will kill the power supply and prevent the board from booting. And then you try and get red light boot. I've already done the article on Metro6.wiki, so we can follow along with that and explain each step of the way and diagnose this board. So this board currently doesn't boot to red light. I've just gone through a random batch of failed builds. Uh, so this is had work done on by one of the guys and there's an issue where it doesn't work. I can also see we're missing a chip here, so we're not going to get much past red light boot at the moment. But still, this console will boot without this chip. The only thing you need to get to red light boot is the two main ASICs, or the single ASIC, and the power light, and a few components, and that's it. So we can get this to red light boot, and we're going to find out what's currently preventing this one from booting. Let's just pull the scope over. And zoom out. So, we have the board here. Uh, we have the two ASIC chips. We've got the power coming in here. And you've got the power LED over here. So this is the thing we're expecting to light. So if I just quickly connect this to a clean juice. And I've actually tested this already to make sure it doesn't boot. Uh, so we turn on the clean juice. We can see... Yeah, we've got no red light. It looked for a minute like we actually had a red light then. Um, but that's just reflection inside. See the kind of red glow that isn't actually on. That's just a reflection, funnily enough. I think that's the red acoustic lining around the room. So at the minute, this console doesn't boot. So we'll turn the power supply off. And then what's the next step? Well, I've purposely made a website for this. Um, so we might as well jump over to that now and take a look. So if you just headed over to retro6.wiki, the website, and go into the Game Gear section, and then the Repair Guides, and you can follow in order here. So if we went to the first one, this is where I'm breaking down the main components on a board, so you know what we're looking at. So you know when I talk about Contrast Wheel, or LCD, or the ASIC RAM, or the op amps, this is all the major components on the Game Gear. So you get familiar with talking about Game Gears. Next is the recapping. I did a video on this, and then I've written this follow-up guide. So now you can recap all your boards, check the voltages, and then troubleshooting more info. That's pretty much the only guides online and the information you'll find freely about how to get Game Gears working. It's just recap the Game Gear, does it work, yes or no? And that's kind of the end of the technical knowledge you get. So the idea behind this is that this will fill out with all the technical knowledge you need to actually get a console booting. Uh, and if you can't get it booting, to find out the exact reason for that problem, not just a generic it doesn't work. So the next step to this is to get to this red light boot. So I'm not going to read through the article because that's the point of the article you can read after the video. And we'll scan through and use this as a guide, however. So you can see the first step is mentioning here the power pins on the console. So this is top right of the console when it's facing this way around. And this is the connector cable that goes to the power board. And in this case, it goes to our clean juice power board. So we can see we should expect 34 volts here V bat, V ref, ground, and 5 volts. And these are required for red light boot. The 34 volt isn't, but the rest are required in some aspect. And that should be the first thing we check. Do we get 5 volts? Do we get ground? We don't care about 34 volts because it's not required for boot. But we have these things called V ref and V bat. So let's just firstly jump backwards and make sure we do have the 5 volt and the ground at least, so the main power circuit. So here's that pin. Just pull up the multimeter here a minute, and let's see now. So we turn on the power supply, and we test from ground to 5 volts. We're actually not getting 5 volts there, so do we have a short, potentially, between ground and 5 volts? Yes, we do. There's actually a dead short on this board, which stops this booting. So let's look around, and there is a way to find a dead short. We can use a thermal camera, we could use IPA fluid. 
let's just start with the obvious first. I know this has been worked on to install a screen and been be capped. So let's just look around all the parts that will have been worked on and see if we can find anything. So down here wouldn't have been touched. Here wouldn't have been touched for the audio. Um, the obvious one is power connector is clean. The contrast wheel's missing. Let's just check around here that they aren't shorted. No, they look fine. We can do a quick test anyway to make sure. Yeah, they're still shorted. So it's not those pads. That doesn't look too healthy there. But that's just shorting a button to ground, so that won't be the issue. And over here, again, looks a bit crusty, but I don't think there's any issue. No, nope, that's not an issue. All the dust flying off these consoles always makes me itch. So let's go over this side. We'll look around here. Oh, and there we go. There's a fairly obvious problem right there. That doesn't look right. Let's just fix that up a minute. Almost guaranteed this will be a short because ground is here, I believe. And that actually is ground and 5 volts, I believe. There's even a resistor in here. So it looks like this has been caught with an iron and flicked off. So you can see this resistor here is caught in the mix. And there we go. It's gone missing. But you'll come to discover next, actually. <laughs> Believe it or not, this is the place where the red light boot requires voltage as well. So even though we've got a dead short here that's stopping it boot, we're also now missing one of the components that's required to boot it. Well, let's just see if that's got rid of the short. That was a fairly obvious place for a short. Let's get the testers. They're still beeping. And go ground and five volts. And there we go, the short's gone. So let's just jump back, test the voltage. Uh, let's just turn on the clean juice. And now let's test the voltage over here again. Hopefully we're getting voltage now. Yep, there we go. We're getting 5 volts now on the 5 volt to ground. You can see we still don't have a power light though. So it's still not into red light boot yet. But we have the 5 volt and the ground. So let's just jump back to the tutorial again that I've written. And let's carry on down here. So we have 5 volts in ground now, which we didn't before. And the next step is VREP and BAT. These are pretty much the only two things left to get the console into red light boot. So what is VREP and VBAT? Well, VBAT is typically the battery voltage. It's just directly the power that comes from the power board of the Game Gear originally. So it would be 9 volts for fully charged batteries. And it would be... Um, in the case of the clean juice, I do things differently and you will actually get 5 volts on VBAT. But typically this is telling the Game Gear what your battery voltage is. VREF on the original voltage regulator, so the original power board to the Game Gear, would output, I believe, 1.5 volts roughly, between 1.28 and 1.5 volts. And then what would happen is when your batteries are low, when they're about 6 to 7 volts, the LED on the console will start to flash to indicate low power. So I've written up how this works, and you can see here the schematic. So we have the VREF and the VBAT coming from the power board. VREF goes straight to pin 30, in this case, of the ASIC, and then VBAT goes through a voltage divider, three voltage dividers here, that give out voltage levels for VRES and V on F. Now, all that needs to happen to get the console to boot is that VBAT comes in, goes through, and goes into VRES. This is the thing that keeps the console in reset, so it will never start up. So all you have to do is ensure that pin 32 VRES is higher than VREF. 
So it doesn't really matter what VREP is. It doesn't matter what you send in on this pin. Uh, but all you've got to ensure is that when you send in voltage on VBAT, it's proportionally higher than VREF because VBAT comes in, gets divided and goes into VRES. So a way you can test if it's simply an issue with the VREF pin and the VRES on off pin. As I say to short the V ref pin here to ground what that does is bring down what would typically be a one point something volt line to zero so if the v battery coming in was low or these resistors were partly damaged or high resistance so the voltages here were lower then v ref is zero anyway so these will never be lower than zero so it will never turn off so this is a kind of quick hack to see if the system boots However, if you want to properly test this, and we can before we even go into these resistors here, we know that pin 30 is the reference voltage. And as I mentioned, pin 32 needs to be higher than pin 30 for it to boot. So let's just check if that's true. Let's turn the power on. Let's turn the console over. And then if we go down to, I believe, this pin here is VREF. And it measures nothing, which is right because it's a clean juice. It would literally measure nothing. I believe this is V on F, which is also measuring nothing. Let me just check the battery voltage to make sure we have a working multimeter first. Yes, we do. And then the one after this is VRES. So you can see these are all zero volts. So because they're all zero, effectively this VRES pin here, the one that holds it in reset, is the same as this one here. They have to be at least, I think, 0.6 volts or nothing will happen. So the reason this console isn't booting is that this VRES here, this reset pin, second one in here, isn't higher than the VREF pin here. So that's the problem we have. If we just quickly jump back to the article again, you can see I explain that R50, 51, and 52, these three resistors, and does this look familiar? This is where we had the short, um, are responsible for this voltage divider. So you can see R50 here brings VBAT into VRES. And that's the only one that's technically required uh, to help with boot. The other two pull it low and set the on F pin, which is to flash the LED. So when V on F is lower than V ref, the console will stay on, but the LED will flash. And once it lowers further and V ref is then lower than V ref, it will turn off completely. So the power on V bat we tested is five volts, but on pin 32, it's nothing. So let's just confirm that. So you see what we're talking about. So we flip this over. We can see the voltage on VBAT is 5 volts. The voltage on VREF is 0. And when we flip over, that 5 volts that should be on VRES pin now, because it just comes through a resistor, so it should come to here, is nothing. So it's not making its way through. So we can deduct from that that between VBAT here and VREF here, VRES here, pin 32, something's broken. So the guess is, look at R50. If we take a look at where R50 is, it's that resistor that was clearly missing. So we need to repair this first before we can go any further. So we jump backwards over to where we fixed that short. to the other right side of the board. You can see here, clearly labeled R50, and the component is completely missing. So let me just grab one off a donor board. So if you didn't have a resistor off a donor board, uh, as mentioned in the article, this is a 9.1 kilo ohm resistor. So if we just place on new 9.1 kilo ohm lost my solder where's my solder gone 
Alright, but. And we can also check with the multimeter, and probably should have before we did this. Turn this on. Uh, we could have checked voltage here, which is the first place it comes down to, which should have been the 5 volts. But you can see the trace clearly there, running off, going off, and going straight to the connector. So you see this trace here. It literally comes from the 5 volts we measured, which is the pin on the other side, the, the third pin down. It comes down this trace here, all the way down and straight to here. So it's really easy to, to follow. And then because this component was missing, we obviously had 5 volts here, and then we got nothing here. But now, this side should be what that V rest pin is on this, the ASIC. So you can see it's 1.5 here. So now we've got a voltage divider that's setting it to 1.5. So what this means is, if we put greater than 1.5 volts on the V ref pin, the console would turn off. The voltage divider then carries on, goes through this divider and then this divider. So to get the LED to flash, you can look at the voltage here. So if we set a voltage higher than 1.13 volts, then the red LED will flash. Once the voltage goes above 1.5, the console will turn off. And that's how the system works. So these two points here, this pin and this pin, Simply make the way back to the ASIC over here. So they make the way back to these two pins. So this one should be the 1.1 something. Do we get that? No, so I think we actually have a break on that line. And the V rest pin. There we go. So the V rest pin works. Let me just get that connector on. 1.5. Oh, there we go. We just bad connection to ground with me multimeter. So you can see those are the two pins 1.13 and 1.5. So now the question is what is V ref, which should be ground? So it is. So now the principle holds that if this pin here, the V ref, is higher than zero, because that's what our V ref is, then the system should boot. So because we have 1.5 volts there, this should be now powered up. We haven't even looked at the light. So let's just take a look. And there we go. We now have red light boot. Now you can see on this board, we don't even have um, the MPU installed. Uh, we've got the shared RAM, which also isn't needed. And we have the video RAM, the ASIC RAM on the back and the off amp. None of these are needed to get the red light to turn on. So the only thing we need to do to get the red light to turn on is to make sure the second pin here is higher than the V ref and it will turn on. Now if this didn't work and you're seeing that you have the voltage here higher than here, you could check the LED itself. So the LED comes out of the ASIC, the signal to turn the LED on, it sinks to ground and it goes through this resistor here. And then this resistor gets sunk to ground and here's the LED, it's the opposite side of the LED. So instead of relying on potentially this resistor could be bad, the trace from the resistor to the ASIC could be broken. If you just want to be sure, is the system booted? You don't need to actually look for the red light itself. You obviously want to get that working eventually. But instead, there's actually a reset pin on all of these devices. So this gets held in reset, this gets held in reset. These two chips are the ones that tell them to come out of reset. So the reset pin um, on this two chip specifically is the top right pad here. So we check the voltage here, we can see it's five volts. Now that's the reset pin. So I just try and turn the power supply off and on while probing this pin. You'll see there's a slight delay between the system booting and this jumping to five volts. So if I turn it on now, you can see that delay there. There was a decent delay where the system boots up and that's this chip starting up, checking these voltages down here work, stabilizing and turning on. So let's say this resistor was missing or broken. The red light wouldn't come on on here. But if you're getting the reset pin down here as five volts, you know the system is actually in red light boot. It's ready to go. There's more things you can check after that, but you need a scope really. 
So the H-Sync and V-Sync pins down here will start to toggle and give you data that shows that the chips are running. But the main state of if you're in red light boot is do you have five volts on the reset pin of the ASIC? If not, you need to check the VREF and VBAT pins of the power wire here. Make sure you're getting the voltages down here that you need. Making sure that this little network here of uh, resistors is present and connected. Uh, the diode and the capacitor here aren't explicitly needed to boot. You can remove those if you're having any issues and just confirm if it works or not. And no other part of the system is required. There's absolutely nothing on here whatsoever. Uh, nothing up here, none of this. The only thing you need to boot is power coming into here, going through these three resistors, making the way to these chips. The chip must have a valid clock, so this clock must be working. And that's it. There is nothing else at all required to get you to red light boot. So it's important that you do get this far before you continue work. And as I've shown in the article here, I've done a good write up with more technical detail, explaining what happens, how you can get it to custom flash the light, um, where the pins are. And again, I'll do I'll update these schematics so they match all versions of Game Gears, but they should be easy to find the info on. Mentioning that you need a good five volt rail, uh, the power LED output, a valid clock signal, where to look if you're not getting a valid clock. Uh, and to check finally here that you're out of reset, which is that top right pin, or I think it's the sixth pin down on the MPU on the left. Uh, so this article is to supplement, uh, obviously, the videos explaining this. But this is the next stage of a Game Gear repair, is to get this red light boot. So you can turn on and see your red light. Once you've got to this stage, I'll go through next what should happen on the board, what should function, such as the V-Sync and H-Sync pins, uh, the cartridge reading the game, where the game stores its data, where the video gets output, all those things. As always in the store, I'll be stocking all parts needed for these repairs and all the tools and equipment. And to really see the video signals, you'll, you'll need an oscilloscope to see that detail. But this gets us to Red Light Boot. So hopefully this was useful, and you can now get every Game Gear console to a Red Light Boot. If you're unable to get it to boot, happily send it to me and I'll do a live video repairing and showing you how. That's always part of this channel, is to aid and assist in repairs, and I want you guys to understand how to repair things fully. Uh, don't start this step until you've recapped. Don't start the next step until you've got to red light boot. It's important that you follow these steps in order, because it's the stages at which the system boots up, powers up, and there's no point jumping to the gun that the screen doesn't come, up, come on, the audio doesn't work, the game doesn't load but you haven't seen a red light, so you haven't diagnosed that you're even at the stage where the system's got power yet. But if you follow these in order, you should be able to get every game gear up and running, and at worst case if not, figure out the exact reason for it not working, and then we can go from there. As mentioned, next up I'll do what happens after this, which is to get valid video signals coming out and the cartridge to start reading data. If you feel I've missed anything, just let me know, and I'll catch you in the next one.